Hey everybody, Kano here with TNG, that's Taco Ninja Gamers, bringing you probably one of the most unusual Let's Plays that we've ever possibly considered of doing. And it's not even really much of a Let's Play, it's more of just a visual novel that, well, it, it's it, it's just sad. I mean, there's no really... The, no other way to describe it it's just I mean I read probably like the first five minutes of it and you just start to feel like this weight on you and um, that that's honestly all I've got to say just there aren't too many words that I can use to describe this um, this game or visual novel is part of my um, pronunciation here but uh, Narcissu uh, that's probably as good as I'm gonna get as far as saying it and um, parts of it are voiced uh, the voice is in Japanese um, the rest isn't um, I'll do what I can to not like completely butcher uh, some words, but yeah, um, hope you all enjoy. So. Mabushikatta hino koto. Sonna, fuyu no hino koto. I attended elementary school like all the others, and during summer breaks I often played until I was out of weekend. June, shortly after my entry into middle school. The day after I had ordered a swimsuit for the next month, my first hospitalization. On a day just before the first semester midterms, on a day when the first drops of rain were so cruelly cold, falling from amidst the pure white of the past sky. Of course, the first time it happened, all my classmates came to visit me almost every day. When I was released, they even came to my house to on the weekends to play. But that was only the first time I ran away. Autumn into winter, winter into spring, a vicious cycle. Hospitalization, release, clinics, and hospitalization again. And before I knew it, even the classmates of once called friends turned into a strangers, as if with every changing of seasons I was being erased from their collective memory. So 
main columns of lit text, sure enough, my examination number was shining in the midst. The nearly empty train car, perhaps thanks to the beautiful afternoon. Almost alone in that train car, I was heading back home from the examination. My left hand held the new traffic regu regulations and I never particularly wanted to drive a car. I never particularly had any motive for it. It was just that my colleagues in the Technical Institute both recommended that I at least get a driver's license. That night, when I told my parents that I'd got my license, they merely replied with an, I see. And when I asked if I could borrow the car just for a test drive, they instantly and curtly said just one thing. No. While I didn't really want to drive the car or anything, the, ex the response was all too expected. Those were my parents for you. The next day, I woke with chest pain and went to the hospital. Sickness and I generally had nothing to do with each other, which is why I found the ER waiting room to be utterly just when I thought they were through examining me, they ordered an x-ray and some blood tests. Then they left. And again I was left waiting for a long, long time. I'd already polished off three vol volumes of Shonen Jump, and I was, it was just about to start on a fourth when They admitted me to the hospital right then and there. And it seemed that my new license, which still lay snugly in my breast pocket, Protagonist, Autumn 2004. Right around when the all too noisy cicadas had finally gone silent, I once again found myself in the hospital as per usual. Of course, it wasn't as if I'd been there the entire time. I came and went, came and went. A futile cycle. My first surgery was a month before. After that, I started doing the five minute commute to and from the hospital by moped. And from then on, I was hospitalized, discharged, ordered to clinic, and hospitalized again and again and again. Well, I still had no clue what PET or a IRESA stand for. In no time at all, several months had already passed. As my appetite decreased, my medications increased. I could feel my own physical strength atrophying away. I kept imagining that my legs were getting thinner. But the needle of the weight scale rudely informed me, it's not just your imagination. And yet I kept looking on at myself with detached interest, as if it were happening to somebody else entirely, as if I were looking at a scene on TV mind could not grasp what had, what had so suddenly happened to my body. Nothing within me was telling me that this was all, that this was real at all. And that's why, even though it was happening to me, I kept looking on as if it were happening to someone far away. A day of winter. Around when the Christmas trees had vanished from the streets. I was discharged home as some kind of year's end treat. It seemed like an exercise in total transience, but still, it made me slightly happy. I traveled back to a home that I had not seen in a long time in the midst of a freezing rain. Strangely enough, my entire family was there. My parents, who had never so much as talked to me, came out to meet me. If with terribly stilted smiles, and my little sister, with whom I'd never had a pleasant word, had made my favorite cream stew and fried shrimp just for me. 
They made me sit at the table. They peeled tangerines for me. They were cruelly kind. It was an impressive display. At this point, a little thought occurred to me about my new driver's license, which was still stuffed away in my pocket, that perhaps things would end for the license without it ever having known any issue, any use. And surrounded by a trio of stilted, steering smiles, I kept that thought as if it were someone else's business with a dispassion and beauty and a total disinterest. had a little talk. I joined in. Well, they talked to me. So this was their so-called announcement. They said, they said it in a terribly roundabout fashion, but they told me that I was going to die. I see. That was my only reply. I had no other words. It was the only thing that left my mouth from beginning to end. Doctor's ballpoint pens flew across paper as if in response to my words. Those were probably hospice enrollment procedures, business-like to the last. My father was the same. So it's this simple thing. Was the only real thought I had. That day I was transferred from fourth floor to seventh floor from the six-person room to a private room. It was a little different than the other wards, the seventh floor. First of all, the floors were sparkling clean, and second of all, the ceiling was higher than I'd ever seen it. The rooms were very nice and had large windows from which the warm, the warm daylight streamed in as if by design. But the windows only opened a little. I tested them out, and my head would just barely fit out. The color of my ID bracelet that I had worn ever since my first hospitalization, the one that had my name and blood type recorded on it. This color now changed from blue to white. A high ceiling, a white vinyl bracelet, a window that would not open more than 15 centimeters. The TV programs celebrating the new year were still playing when I was transferred to the 7th floor. And it was at the dawn of that very year that I met her for the first time. Narekisos. Uyu. Nanakai. I think I will cut it there. And I will continue this in another episode just to make it convenient for viewers and just for the sake of uploading time. I just have to say this story is sad. Like there, I, I just, I, I can't justify any other words. Like it's, it, it seems it, very sad and psychological. <laughs> yeah, like. Like Sai just said, it, it's. Oh, whoops! It, my bad. Sorry. The feels. <laughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I know my voice can get kind of monotonous after a while, but the story, though, I I just have to say, like, it, it's not hard to sympathize or feel any kind of sadness or emotions toward this so um i'll get the next episode to you guys as soon as i can um hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next video <laughs>